welcome you to our worship service today. This is again our continuing celebration of this season after the Epiphany, or Pentecost, pardon me. It is after Epiphany, but it is also after Pentecost, that celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is our opportunity to grow for the season. Color is green. And of course, the summer is now upon us, and hopefully your plants, your flowers are now growing, and hopefully you've planted your corn or whatever else it is that... Uh, that you decided to plant is an amazing thing. We learned that last week in our lesson about how we plant all of these seeds and all of these flowers. We walk away at night, we come back the next morning, and there it grows. It's just an amazing thing. It's a gift of God, and we're so grateful for this opportunity. A couple of things that we would like to point out to you, amazing things that God is doing in our church and what we would like to do in our future. We are looking forward to that opportunity of opening up our worship again a little bit more in fullness. We're still going to continue to... Be concerned about the weakest of those who are struggling physically. We want to keep them healthy, and we want to keep them well. And so we have decided as a congregation to be as respectful as possible to those who are at risk in our congregation, and several of them on occasion come on Sunday mornings, and so we have to continue to protect them. And so even though I have my COVID vaccine and I feel very safe and comfortable, I can still be a carrier of that COVID, and I might, in turn, get somebody sick who's more at risk. And so we will continue to protect one another out of love and respect and kindness for each other. So it's, uh, again, with that in mind, we have sent a survey out to every congregation in the church, and we've also posted that survey on our Facebook pages related to worship and your comfort level in worship, and um, our uh, kind of a reflection on what some of our uh, regulations are right now and about how we can come together uh, safely, protect again the weakest, but also th those who are most at risk physically, but also open up our worship a little bit more uh, so that we have maybe a little bit more music, a little more opportunity for us to gather together. So please fill that out. We'd be very grateful for that you have until the end of this month. Again, you can... Go straight online to our Facebook page, fill it out right there, or wait until you get it in your home, in your letter, and you've been welcome to send it back to the church office at that point. Okay, those are the big concerns that we want you to be aware of. I invite you to prepare your hearts for worship today. We make confession before the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us approach God with a true heart and full assurance of God's power to heal and to forgive us. Merciful God, you, you have, have loved, loved your people from, from the beginning, beginning of time. Amen. Desiring that, that we also love you and our neighbor, neighbor with the fullness of our heart. heart. We confess that we often seek wealth or security, security for ourselves without acting generously toward others. others. Forgive, Forgive us and point us in to your ways that we might reflect your will for us and your creation. Amen. God has promised that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. And so as an ordained minister of the Church of Christ, by his authority, not my own, by his authority, I declare to you the pardon and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our opening hymn, The Word of God Incarnate.
Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray. eternal majesty who preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength pilot us, by your power preserve us, by your wisdom instruct us, and by your hand protect us, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first lesson we continue to read from Paul's book to the Corinthians, second book. Chapter 6, St. Paul writes, As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacles in anyone's way, so that no fault may be founded with our ministry. But as servants of God... We have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance and affliction, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and in good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as an unknown, and yet we are well known. As dying, and see, we are alive. As punished, and yet not killed. As sorrowful, yet rejoicing. As poor, yet make, making many rich. As having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your heart also. Here ends the lesson. Let us read responsibly our 107th Psalm. Congregations welcome to respond with 
the even frames, every other frame, as I will indicate to you. The psalmist writes, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for, for his, his steadfast, steadfast love endures, endures forever. forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those who he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from, from the, the east and, and from, from the, the west, west from, from the north and, and from the, the south. south. Some were sick through their sorrowful way, sinful ways and became, uh, because of their iniquities, endured affliction. They, they loathed any, any kind, kind of food, and, and they, they drew, drew near to the, the gates of death. death. And they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them from their distress. He, he sent, sent out his word and healed and them, and, and delivered them, them from, from destruction. destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. And let, let them, them offer thanksgiving, thanksgiving sacrifices, sacrifices, and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. joy. lesson for this Sunday is found in the book of Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that day when evening came, Jesus said to them, let's go over to the other side. And so he dismissed the crowds and they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and other birds were with him. But a fierce gale of wind developed and the waves were breaking over the boat so that the boat was already filling with water. So Jesus himself was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? But Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. The wind died down and became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? But they became very afraid and said to one another, Who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Holy Father, we pray that you would help us through our storms in this life and Bless our, your word today that it might fill our hearts. And uh, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Much different picture than the one you saw at the beginning of the service. If you recall, it was again a storm of Bruin with a lightning coming down from the lightning bolt from the sky and a little boat about to be caught in the storm. And this, of course, is the theme of our lesson for today. These storms of life that often threaten to overwhelm us. But in this case, there was a literal storm that had overwhelmed the disciples. They had been taking their, their first tour of duty with Jesus, their first ministry tour. Jesus had done some unusual things, something they'd never seen before with his teaching, speaking with great authority, healing uh, people who were ill, and even casting out demons from those who had been possessed. So amazing things had happened, and now Jesus says, hey, let's go to the other side. Let's go minister to another group of people. Uh, and so I will tell you, the sea that they were crossing may not seem very big an ordeal for us today and our, motor, our, our boats with engines on it and so forth, we could be over in a heartbeat, but they still depended upon the wind and their boats were really tiny. So they were easily overwhelmed by water. These were fishing boats. There's not much to them. And so we had a lot of experienced fishermen, probably four or so of the disciples were experienced fishermen and a storm came brewing, and not even these fishermen would stay outside in this stuff, not in their normal circumstances, but it developed very quickly. And so Mark uses this lesson for a purpose. It illustrates to us that Jesus is not simply a rabbi, and that's kind of the whole purpose of Mark. We don't know who he is. Mark never tells us who Jesus is. I encourage you to read Mark with that type of curiosity sometime. Put behind you all of those things that you think you know about Jesus because you've been taught that by your parish pastors and in your congregations all your life. And open up the book like you're reading it for the very first time because this is who it's written for. I love the Gospel of Mark. Everybody says, oh, read the Gospel of John first. No, don't read the Gospel of John first. If you're going to read any Gospel, read the Gospel of Mark. Because John, bam, 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 it's story after story, lesson after lesson. And you get this image that he tries to build to you, and he, he leaves us with a question. 
In fact, he does this on a regular basis. Who is Jesus? Well, we know he's more than a rabbi. I already told you, he did so much more than any rabbi that any of these people had ever seen. So here they are out on the boat, and we're told that he calms the sea with a simple word. Now, who, who has the power to do that? Again, Mark never answers that question. But I'm going to give you a little bit of background. You've probably heard me say this before. I really have a fixation on this, in particular Genesis 1. It, it, it's a sad thing when we Christians think that Genesis 1 is about the materialistic creation of the universe, and that's what it's about. It, it's so much more than that. It's a very rich passage with a lot of interaction between other religions, in particular the Canaanite religion and Baal and Mesopotamian theology, the Enuma Elish. Maybe you've heard of that. But there is a story in Genesis 1 that's meant to directly contend against the Enuma Elish and in particular the Mesopotamian gods, in particular Marduk because he was their god, the god of the Babylonians. And this is actually behind what Mark is trying to write to us and tell us. So in the book of Genesis chapter 1, if you remember what happened, the, the earth, the earth was a void. It was chaos. In fact, there's a very particular Hebrew word that's used for that chaos, tiamen, or in other uh, languages, Semitic languages, tiamat. Tiamat, again, was the goddess of chaos and destruction in Mesopotamian theology. And she had pretty good reason for being ticked off. Her children, she had a bunch of children, and she loved her children like any mom does. They were running and playing, and all the other older gods got kind of frustrated and upset with these little children because they were a little bit too noisy. So they did what any god would do. They killed them. So you'd think Tiamat would, Tiamat would be a little bit, Tiamat would be a little bit upset with this. Well, she's on a tear. She's going out for vengeance. She wants to destroy everything and everyone with her. And so she is on a, on a tear to kill everybody in the entire universe. Uh, so you can understand her desire and want for revenge. So this is who Tiamat or Tiamat is. Tiamat is the goddess of vengeance, the goddess of chaos, the goddess of the sea. So whenever a storm is brewing and the sea is in chaos, oh, there's Tiamat. She's causing problems. That's what an ancient person would think. The storm was brewing. Mark is reflecting upon this lesson here. But we go back to Genesis 1. Let's finish this. What did God do? God looked at the chaos that was reigning and he said one word, well, one phrase, let there be light. Bam! Chaos was put in order. All it takes is a word from God. So you know that God that the Mesopotamians were so fearful of? God, with a simple word, tamed her. So the Jews knew this. This was a story that, with which they were familiar. And now they hear Jesus going out onto the sea with very experienced seamen, by the way. And they're terrified. And they wake Jesus up. Jesus, get up, get up, get up. He gets up. He says, really? Be still. And all of a sudden, the, the storm is calm. Who does this remind you of? Mark never answers that. But now do you see the connection between Genesis 1 and this story? Very intentional. All right? So these seasoned sailors were terrified, but again, the God of the Jews spoke a simple word, let there be light. Tiamat proves herself to be nothing but a paper tiger. No threat at all, certainly not to God and to those whom God loves. Because the God of the Jews is the God who brings order out of chaos. So who is Jesus? So let's turn to our lesson from where we're all help come. The disciples again are pleading with Jesus, pleading with him to come to their aid. And now their fear is honestly a very normal thing. Is it normal for humans to express fear? Or maybe afraid of heights. You're afraid of spiders. You're afraid of clouds. Don't blame you. 
We have many fears. Many of our fears are reasonable fears. It is a reasonable fear to be afraid of heights. Okay? Of dangerous places and dangerous things. But they question, when they try to wake Jesus, they're questioning Jesus' commitment to their safety. Jesus, you said you want us to follow you, but now you've put us at risk. What the heck, Jesus? Isn't that normal in our lives when we're going through some tragic times? I mean, my life is just like yours. I, I have some ups and downs, and I can tell you what I can have an up and down within a half an hour of each other. I've got my up time, and I'm like, oh, God is so good, and life is just fantastic, and life is grand. I will never question God ever again. And then I stub my toe a half an hour later, and I'm all upset. How could God do this to me? Have you ever done that? Come on, be truthful. So one minute you're up here, the next minute you're down here, okay? Oh, God is so good. Next minute, why would God do this to me? It's normal, and it's normal for us on occasion to question God. It's just a normal human response. The reason why is because we're limited in our vision of this universe. We think that this life, which by the way is like this big, 90 years, that's 90 years, that's it. We think that this is all there is. We have a limited vision of what lies beyond and before. God has a bigger vision. So obviously we are going to be fearful. They turn to Jesus since the boat is again being overwhelmed by the storm. That's what the Bible says. In fact, it's like there, there, there's really anthropomorphic images going on here of the storm reaching out with its hands, threatening to pull them down into the sea. It's kind of a very beautiful image, very poetic image, that we miss, I think, a lot, oftentimes in our English translations. So they're being overwhelmed by this. These experienced seamen, they don't know what to do. So Jesus wakes, he comes to their aid, and he is not overwhelmed by the storm. He's not, he's not impressed. Just a storm. He stills the storm with a simple word, peace. So this word demonstrates the authority of Jesus. And then Jesus turns to his disciples, and we oftentimes, we just have to be really cautious of these things. Jesus seems to be giving the disciples a hard time. That's at least often how we hear it when we read it. But I want you to imagine for a minute, maybe if you remember when you were young, and you're in a store with your parents. And you kind of walk this way, or they walk away from you. You look around, and you're like, where'd they go? Where'd they go? And you panic, and you panic, and you're looking around. And you come over, and you, your dad grabs you by your hand. He says, this is okay. Where'd you go? I always had my eye on you. Don't fear. That's how Jesus is speaking to the disciples. He's not saying, I can't believe you didn't have faith. This is what we in Christians do with this. We turn to this, into this indictment. He is not indicting them. Being fearful is a normal part of the human experience. Jesus understands that. But he says, get a bigger vision on life. I'm not going to let you go. So he questions, it looks like he's questioning their faith. As I said, it's not an indictment. Because oftentimes, we as humans, we, we lack control. We have no control over the storms that we face in life. And it's scary because we have a limited vision of the universe. So what we have to do is we have to hold the hand of the Almighty God and trust that God will take us through this storm, whatever it may be. And I don't know what that storm is it's brewing for you right now, but for all of us at times in our life, we're going through a whole lot of stuff. Maybe it's good for you right now. Good for you, but you know the storm's brewing at some point. They come and they go. So the question that Mark leaves us with, and I want to just read you this last verse. The disciples were very much afraid. They said to one another, Who then is this? Did even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the question that Mark, it's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like um, uh, somebody, here, I'll do it here, because you know I normally don't look straight at the camera, because that's kind of not a cool thing to do. But I'm looking straight at you right now. This is what Mark is doing. He's breaking that extra plane, you know, like you do in a TV show. It's kind of freaky when an actor looks straight at the camera. I'm looking straight at you, and the question that he's asking you is simply this. What are you going to do with it, Jesus? 
Who is he? Who is he? That's kind of the question that Mark puts into the mouth of the disciples. He's really asking it of you. He's breaking that plane and talking directly to you. Who do you say this Jesus is? You've seen and heard these stories. Wait a minute, are you putting the pieces together? So who is Jesus? Well, we know this about Jesus. He is the one who brings order out of chaos. He is the one who brought peace amidst the storms of life. He is the one who brings calm into a troubled life. So Jesus is? Oh, we got to let you figure that one out. That's what Mark does. That's what's so awesome about the Gospel of Mark. If you're like me, you've already got ready that made that Sunday school answer. Well, oh, Jesus is God. And the good news of this lesson is simply this. There may be storms brewing in your life. They may be out of control. You're controlled, and you know what? They are out of your control. You have every reason to be afraid of many of the things that you're going to be facing in your life. But it's those times of fear, like little children, we turn up and realize we're holding the hand of the one who brings order out of chaos and peace out of troubled times. And we can be assured that with a simple word, God will bring peace in our lives as well. And so we're going to pray for you. There is a uh, good opportunity as we turn to our prayer after the lesson today. My wife just came to me with a co-worker of hers whose husband was in a massive accident. They're going through a storm right now. They have every reason to be afraid. But we're going to pray for God, the one who brings order out of chaos, to reach down in this chaos in their life, because there is chaos in, the chaos in their life, and to bring peace amidst their storms. And I'm praying for that for you as well, because I don't know what you're going through. Well, let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the bringer of order out of chaos. You are the God that looks at the, the chaos and the dangers of life, and they're just truly paper tigers to you. That's because you have a broader perspective on life. You transcend the universe. We don't, God, and so we fear. There are tragedies that are happening right now. In particular, as representative of all these tragedies, this, this man who was in a car accident and, and, uh, of, of uh, my wife's co-worker, her husband, and we just pray that you would reach down amidst their chaos today. And whatever chaos is representative of all the people who are listening today, and I'm asking that you would help us like little children to reach up and just grab hold of your hand. Or if we've let it go and we're wandering somewhere, I'm sure it might seem like you're far away. But I'm asking you to just touch us on the shoulder and remind us that you're right behind us. You are surrounding us and you're with us. Because God, the storms can be blowing. But we just trust ourselves to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us confess together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We pray again for those in need this day. We're lost amidst the storms of life. We think first and foremost of sailors who truly are lost in a literal storm, perhaps. I don't know the circumstances of every ocean-going vessel at this point, but we pray that you would continue to bless them, for many of them have been away from their families for a very long time. And so I ask that you keep them safe from all harm and bring them safely to those who love them. We lift up for those who are at far-flung ports throughout the world. We think in particular of those men and women who have so faithfully served us and pray that you would protect them and bring them home to their families. We pray for that day and that age when all of our swords will be beaten to plowshares and we might do something truly productive that the day and the age of guns and weapons would be put behind us in the day of producing and caring and loving one another would be in our, in our, uh, right in, our, in front of us. But God, we the church have something to say and to do about that, so we ask you to help us to be more caring and loving of those around us, remembering that this is the one and only commandment, to love one another as we have been loved by you. And we pray, O oh God, that you would continue to bless this world through our efforts, our community, for those who are hungry, for those who are imprisoned. We ask you continue to remind them that they've not been abandoned. We also lift up this day uh, those who struggle with cancer. And again, those who are going through whatever storm of life that they might be going through right now. And these can be representative in so many different ways. It could be, again, cancer. It could be other physical ailments. We, um, my wife uh, knows of a, 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 another man who's had some other problems and has COVID right now and really struggling. We just pray that you bless him. We know that we've got uh, a grandmother of one of our members in the church who is just truly not doing well between life and death. We just ask you to continue to guide her. We know that there are people whose relationships are, are at a crossroads, or perhaps broken at least from a human perspective beyond repair. We just lift all of these things, God, to you. Whatever troubles are in our minds today, whether they're for ourselves or for others, we just take this time to place them before you and trust that you will care for them. Heavenly Father, we are like little children, and so grab our hand this day that we might have the comfort of your presence and the peace of your love. For we ask this all for the sake of our, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon him with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn for the day, Be Not Afraid. Across the barren desert 
desert, but you will not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. That would be me. Thank you. And happy Father's Day to all of you as well watching. Mm -hmm. 